Diversity of Life Investigation 3.4B, Animal Cell Parts. In our last one, we finished off looking at uh, asking if we saw structures inside of that animal cell. That animal cell was our human cheek cell inside of your mouth. And we determined that because we have cheek cells, we have lots of other cells that we've heard of, bone cells, skin cells, muscle cells, nerve cells, brain cells, blood cells, that we too, as humans, are also made up of cells. And just like the Elodea, just like the Paramecium and the Protease and stuff, uh, we too have other cell structures inside of our cells. And one of those was that big dot that was in the center of our human cheek cells. Today, we're going to look at even more of those smaller ones that we can't see and compare what we see inside our human cells with what uh, uh, those uh, Elodea and the uh, Paramecium cells and what we have in common and how we are different. To do that, we'll be again using our FossWeb.com. We'll be looking at these levels of complexity that's in the multimedia section of the diversity of life. And we're gonna focus this time on the animal cell part. It says animal cells are part of multicellular organisms called animals. Humans are animals. Animals include organisms like insects, worms, sea stars, fish, cats, and people. All animals must eat other organisms to get the energy that they need to live. This is a typical kind of cell. This is just a general cell that we see here. It's not identical to, to, to any of them, but there are common characteristics in them. Uh, these are some other of those organelles that we've talked about in some of the other ones. Some of these will be similar to the other cells. Some of them will be different. To do so, we are all then going to look at one of those uh, sheets again to compare, look at one of these a little bit more in detail and to look at the cell structures and compare their functions. You'll need to download and complete this Animal Cell Structures and Functions Worksheet. Um, again, uh, this one shows the typical animal cell up, up here and the many different one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight organelles that you would find inside your typical animal cell. And that includes us as humans. Um, below there is the function that is listed and so you will need to come up with which of those eight structures matches the description the function of those uh, cell structures in the animal cells and you'll finish that complete that and upload that at the end of this lesson once again humans are animals that's always a big thing we're not a, we're not an animal we're humans no we are animals our cells are very similar to all the other animal cells your entire body is made up of cells and if we look at a representative cell like you see on this page here you can see that those cells are more complex than what you observed using even using a compound microscope so these are really small small stuff we would use an electron microscope for probably a tem electron microscope to see what's inside and what they do so download this one and complete it using the FOSS web and we'll look at some more uh, results from our animal cell structures so, so far, we have looked at human cells, your cheek cells. We've looked at protease, the paramecium, and we've looked at plant cells, the elodea cells. The real common questions is, what do they have in common? What do we share, us as humans, share with plant cells and with the paramecium? I think by looking at those, you, you, you see things like a nucleus, uh, US, uh, look at cytoplasm, we look at a membrane, as well as several other ones that, they, that we all share in common. We, as living things, share all of that within our cells, our human, our own cells. And then the other question is, well, how are they different? Well, the plant cells have a wall, and they have chloroplasts, right? Um, the proteists have vacuoles, some things that might be different as well. Um, other stuffs, uh, they have uh, cilia to be able to move around in where the plants don't. They're all locked in one place. Ours are kind of locked in one place too. We don't have free roaming cells. 
So yeah, you can see uh, more and more as humans, we see that our, some, we, we, we share some of those same organelles and cell structures as many of the other plants and protease living things on the planet as well. It's very interesting. So again, we could go back to our focus question, what, or, what microscopic structures make up organisms such as humans? A lot of that, again, deals with us as cells. Us having cells, plants having cells, proteins having cells. Uh, you and I share many of the same cells and cell characteristics. We have brain cells and muscle cells and stomach cells and skin cells and bone cells. And th therefore, and yes, how they are similar, similar to other cells and how they are different than other cells is a key thing to be able to do and to represent as we go through the rest of these lessons. If we take that information and we move forward, why do you think that different kinds of cells have different cell structures? Why do you think that a plant has a cell wall and chloroplasts? Why do you think that a paramecium has cilia and vacuoles? Why do we all have a nucleus? Why do human cells have certain things and other ones don't? All cells do all the functions of life. That's the key term in here. They all do the all functions of life. Every cell can act on its own like it is a living thing. Now, some cells have to be part of a living organism to be alive, where some cells like the paramecium can be on their own. But all cells have all the functions of life and they have all the characteristics of life. So if we talk about a dog being able to need food, water, uh, exchange gases, eliminate wastes, reproduce, respond to its environment, have a suitable environment, any of those kinds of things, every single cell in that dog's body also has these same characteristics of life. That cell that's in its nose or in its tail or in its heart or in its liver all does that same thing as well. And also the same thing as the parasites and paramecium and stuff that's inside that dog cell. If it's a single celled organism or if it's any part of that dog's multicellular organism, they all do the same functions. So that every single cell in your body needs food. It needs that gas exchange. It can and will reproduce. It does respond to its stimuli. It will do all of those functions, all those characteristics of life. All cells do all the functions. That's a key point we want you to take away from this discussion. Now you can add the animal cell to your evidence of life sheet and check off all the mark of any characteristics that you can that you think you might have seen with regard to your human cheek cells. So go through each of those, look at those, and kind of hypothesize what we've talked about, but add uh, animal cells, your individual human cells, to that list. As we move forward, we can then compare us with paramecium and Elodea cells as well. Finally, one big thing that always comes up is how big are cells? We've talked about, looked at the, the, um, the Elodea cells and how they compare with the paramecium and how big and small they are. Well, not all, every cell in the human body is the same either. If you would, go to your FOSS, FOSS Web Science Resources book and find on page 110, there is a really cool thing about how big are cells. And it will show you some examples in comparison to each other. Things that you've heard before like proteases and bacteria and uh, viruses and maybe red blood cells. Check it out. It's really cool about the sizes and they all compare it to the width of a human hair. So if we think a human hair is tiny, you're going to see some, some interesting uh, things on page 110 about how big different cells can be. But again, all of those cells, in order to be alive, I'll do all the same functions that we consider to be living things. Last but not least, once you're done with this one, you're done with that uh, animal cells uh, structures and functions sheet, go ahead and upload that. And then we've got um, one more little thing on uh, a, a reading in the textbook again on cells. And there will be a little quiz over that reading as you're completing the reading. That's coming up next.